I know you're still looking for rate cuts, perhaps as many as three this year. What gives you the confidence the Fed will be able to do that at this point? Yeah, good morning, morning, and thank you very much for having me. Look, I guess uh, what we're doing right now is a little bit the exact opposite mistake to what we did at the start of the year, right? You guys were just talking about how the market was getting perhaps a little bit ahead of itself at the start of the year with the extent of rate cuts, right? Remember just a few months ago, really the overwhelming opinion was, you know what, just exclude rents, exclude shelter, and, you know, annualize the last three or six months, and actually core inflation is already below 2%, right? And, you know, as exaggerated as that was a few months ago, I think we're doing the exact same mistake on the opposite now. When we look at the headline CPI data last week, I mean, in all fairness, we had an upside surprise of less than 10 basis points. You guys are just showing the, the headline CPI chart. You know, it's not like we're breaking out suddenly and we're seeing this massive new inflation wave. When we look at last week's inflation data as well, the upside surprise was mostly driven really by auto insurance, which can largely really be blamed on the aftermath of uh, uh, of COVID-19, right, as used and new car prices went up. So all in all, I think, yes, we had this upside surprise. We had this push higher beyond this, this range that we've seen for a couple of months, both in treasuries and in bonds. But I think we are really making this the same mistake like we've done in, in January and February mm. that we were sort of really getting a little bit ahead of itself that it's all Goldilocks and everything is fine and inflation is completely dead now. And now we're pretending as if the world has turned really upside down with, with those inflation data. I think we just need, you know, one or two data that is maybe perhaps in line, maybe a tad below expectations. And suddenly, actually, June and July can be back in play. Well, they would want to be because there's only six meetings left in the rest of the year. And if you're looking for three cuts, then, you know, and you take out May, that only leaves five. Are you saying at three of those meetings, we're going to see a 25 basis point cut or maybe a 50 basis point at one of them? No, I don't think 50 basis points is probably not realistic. But to be honest, for, for risk assets overall, right, if you sit in high yield, if you sit in emerging market debt, if you're long and overweight uh, uh, equities, it doesn't really matter whether you get one or two or three rate cuts. What matters really for risk assets overall is, is the prospect of eventual rate cuts, right? What really matters is mm. that basically the Fed is telling us, look, there's definitely not going to be rate hikes, right? We are done with hiking rates. What matters is the prospect of rate cuts. And at, then at the end of the day, for us, right, from an asset allocation perspective, it doesn't really matter whether, you know, I get a, a September cut first or whether I get a Ju June or July cut or whether I only get a December cut, right? It really matters whether Powell and the Fed overall is guiding us to eventual rate cuts as long as they don't turn into, okay, actually, we've been completely wrong and we need to actually turn into rate hikes again that is really what matters as yes. long as that is not the case it's positive for risk assets max you're bullish on us and japan equities you know that may be speaking for itself you're also avoiding em local currency debt which actually looks like a great call right now what happens with this em currency weakness are we stabilizing I think we could be stabilizing at least a little bit. At least what we're seeing short term now is that dollar positioning on our measures, sort of the fast money dollar positioning has become very, very stretched in the last couple of weeks, right? Again, what we're seeing now is suddenly it is consensus that inflation is going to go up even f further, right? There is going to be even more dollar strength. It's suddenly become consensus that the ECB and the Bank of England will be moving ahead of the Fed, that they will be moving more and will be cutting more than the Fed, right? It's been both uh, moved into consensus, but it's also moved into market pricing. So I would argue, look, if the Fed really... Uh, uh, moves into one or two rate cuts. And if the ECB cuts uh, in June and maybe cuts three, maybe even four times this year, it's not going to have a major impact on FX, right? It's not going to have a major impact from here on the dollar anymore because mm. that is now largely in the price. So for EM, in fact, we've been adding to EM, right? We've been now adding into EM as of yesterday. We've closed the underweight in emerging market local currency debt. We've actually added to EM hard currency debt because particularly the high yield spreads look more attractive. And we've also uh, added to EM equities because that kind of sentiment, both on the rate side and also the fast money positioning on the dollar side, they just look a tad stretched now. 
Well, that's fascinating, Max. Very briefly, where in EM then are you adding? What are the countries that are looking a little bit more stable to you now? Yeah, I think, you know, particularly in LATAM, it looks really, really great because uh, let's not forget what we look on, what we see at the uh, growth side of things. We are looking a little bit more at sort of early cyclic characteristics, right? Our global manufacturing PMI model, for example, has picked up quite a bit. We are looking more going from globally from rate hikes to rate cuts. So we should be looking at the tailwind on aggregate for global growth. So we're looking more at early cyclic characteristics. And, you know, Latin America there is a great play for that, right? It's got a lot of commodity exposure. Look at Brazil, also look at Mexico after that sort of correction that we had in the last couple of weeks. So particularly there, I think it's quite attractive. Yes.